Usually I reserve the Cavs jacket for just the Cavs recaps like the one I just uploaded. But, you know, something tells me that I wanted to keep this on. It kind of fits the vibe. You still got the, the undershirt collar over the jacket collar as, well, not as usual, but as usual for last video. And the Browns have made a trade with the New York Jets. So the Browns trading their 2023 second round pick, 42nd overall, in exchange for wide receiver Elijah Moore and the New York Jets third round pick. Maybe they have more than one, but their 74th overall pick. This is showing that there is more than one way to use draft picks in order to address your needs. Obviously, the most traditional way is to just hang on to them and, and draft somebody in the position that you want or the best player available. And this is the, so the second way. There's more, more than one way to skin a cat and all that stuff where normally, if especially in non-premium draft positions like the Browns are kind of forced themselves to be in, if you can use those draft picks to acquire someone that you think could make an immediate impact on your roster, then sometimes that makes the most sense in order to do. And I feel like that's the kind of the position that the Browns were in here. Now, this trade comes off the news that the Jets would be landing McCall Hardman, uh, a guy who Browns fans and new Browns signing Juan Thornhill kind of thought might be a fit for Cleveland. Although, besides reports of the Browns were interested, nothing really picked up on. The Browns are definitely going to get this guy. Uh, the move to, with Hardman to the Jets probably made some of the Jets wide receivers a bit more expendable plus Elijah Moore has had some issues with the Jets as of late so this trade makes sense for both teams as the Browns did need a wide receiver with speed who isn't Anthony Schwartz the last couple seasons for him have been pretty major disappointments and I think this trade accomplishes that pretty well if you want to get a little nitpicky I mean I maybe McCole Hardman you know maybe getting him out of free agency without having to give up that second round pick might have been slightly better although I'm not sure the organization is too worried about it given that the way that they're restructuring deals and how they're signing free agents now they seem to be kind of all in mode they seem to have created this window for themselves and they're trying to pry it open for as long as possible and you know the you know three years from now be damned essentially especially when they get a third round pick back they did actually get back some draft capital they essentially traded down in the draft from the second to the third round uh, and they still got Elijah Moore which I again I think that's I think that's a dub for Andrew Barry. It could still be a dub for the Jets because they sign a wide receiver. They get a second round pick. And I'm not saying the Jets come out looking bad. I'm just saying Andrew Barry definitely addressed the need in the Browns roster. And I, as a Browns fan, am definitely excited to see Elijah Moore in a Browns uniform and what he can add to this receiver room. Now, the Browns, I, I feel like this is an, a little bit of an interesting kind of change in the philosophy a little bit as they've been using free agency to fill their needs pretty much all offseason. They have wasted no time. It doesn't seem like they're... they're going to be using any of the draft picks to count on immediate impacts. And maybe that they're seeing that using non-premium draft positions to try to fill holes in the roster doesn't usually produce the more immediate results that the Browns might look for. Again, with the way they're restructuring deals and not having a first round pick and for the next two drafts, they're kind of putting themselves in, in, in a position where they kind of have to get players. If, if, they, if there's holes in their roster, and we know they are, where we watched the team last year, where they're going to need to be filled and they're going to be need to fill to a satisfactory level now, not in, you know, after, after three or three or more years of development, they're going to have to have a pretty much immediate impact on the roster in order for this window to mean anything because eventually the cap number on Deshaun Watson's contract is going to force them to uh, kind of probably cut a lot of guys that they could use or, you know, that's going to hamper the team eventually. They're just kind of kicking the, that can down the road as far as possible. But as for this season, they are loading up on talent. They're filling holes on their roster. And I do plan on doing a more uh, extensive free agency update tomorrow as there has been a lot more significant movement even than the... Uh, but, you know, during the last time I made one between then and now, there has been more movement on the free agent front that the Browns have used to uh, sign some guys. But this trade does feel seem like it's pretty huge as they've been looking for a receiver with speed. Again, they, they were kind of one of the teams in on the McCole Hardman rumors. He ended up going to the Jets. You know, and they the Browns make this move as kind of a response to, well, we have to get our guy sooner rather than later. And I do appreciate that, that they are kind of going out and shopping around and getting guys that can make an immediate impact, he's proven to have, you know, an, an NFL skill set. And this definitely is an upgrade over a guy like Anthony Schwartz, where he has that speed that defenses have to think about. But maybe he can also catch the ball too. That would be kind of nice. So uh, thank you all for watching this video. If you made it this far, again, I will be doing a more comprehensive, more wide scope free agency recap between my the last one I made and now tomorrow. And I will see you then at the next one.